to the Freeman Heights Baptist Church family and to all who are viewing by way of YouTube, Facebook. As you can tell, we're not in the sanctuary today as it relates to COVID and the spread of the virus. Uh, we are filming from home, but we're thankful to God to be able to continue to get his word out and to have the privilege to say a word for the Lord. In fact, it is part of the this experience of this virus, this 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 issue that has just kind of dominated us for almost the last 13 months that the Lord just placed on my uh, heart to just continue to encourage the body of Christ and to those who are listening uh, to continue to do those things that are pleasing to God. I'd ask for those who have your device and Bible, if you would open up your Bibles to Acts 20, 17, 24. Acts, the 20th chapter, beginning at verse 17, and we're going to go through verse 24. Not only do I want you to open up your Bible or uh, your device, but also open up your heart and your mind to receive the word of God. This, this passage that we're going to look at today is rich and is deep. It almost could be a series in itself, but I'm going to kind of give us an airplane overview of this passage. Acts uh, 20 verses 17 through 24 sounds like this. From Malthus, he sent to Ephesus and called to him the elders of the church. And when they had come to him, he said to them, you yourselves know from the first day that I set foot in Asia, how I was with you the whole time, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials, which came upon me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you publicly from house to house, solemnly testifying to both Jews and Greeks of the repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, bound by the Spirit, I'm on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit solemnly testifies testifies to me in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions await me. But I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself, so that I may finish my course in the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify solemnly on the gospel of the grace of God. I read for your hearing and edification, Acts 20, 17 through 24, and all of God's people should say amen, acknowledging the power of his word. Let's pray. Our gracious and heavenly Father, again, we are thankful for this privilege that you've given us, and we just pray now in the precious name of Jesus that you would have your way with us. Control hearts and minds, open hearts and minds, that they would be encouraged and convicted. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. For a subject, I was going. I want to talk about how to be a contagious Christian. How to be a contagious Christian. Now, I, I I know my brothers and sisters. You're saying a contagious Christian. Do we as Christians want to be contagious? Well, when we, especially during this time, we associate contagious right with COVID-19, and the statistics are overwhelming. At the time of the uh, taping of this particular message. There have been 24,900,000 in the United States alone that have been infected with the virus, which has resulted in over 414,000 deaths. Why did this virus spread so fast? It was because an infected person came within six feet of someone else and the virus that was in them came out of their mouth and was spread and had an impact, infected those that could be within a six feet range. The Apostle Paul understood the need to spread what was inside of him to others. He had a passion. Our, our text takes place as, uh, going back to the third missionary journey. Paul had had two previous missionary journeys, but here in his third missionary journey, he understood from the very beginning that it was his, his responsibility to, to spread the word of God. The COVID-19 virus spread sickness and death, but Paul, the apostle Paul and, 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 and Christians, oh no, on contrast, the gospel that we spread by grace 
not kills, but saves. Thanks be unto God through Christ Jesus. What would our community look like? What would our city be? What would our state be? What would our nation be? What would our world be if every Christian, every Christian, every follower of Jesus Christ were to make a concentrated effort to make sure that if they got within six feet of any person, they spread the gospel. Think about your daily walk. Think about your daily life. How many times do you come within six feet of someone? And the question is, uh, do we spread the gospel? Oh, I tell you, let's talk a few minutes about how to be a contagious Christian. And as we examine the text, it gives us a couple of bullets that we can look at. First thing we need to understand is there is a call of leadership, a call to leadership. It's right there in the text. It says in the text that he called to him the elders of the church from Altus. He's there some 25 to 30 miles they had to travel to come to the Apostle Paul, which depending on uh, their mode of travel, it was a day's journey. So here we have the Apostle Paul, the uh at that part of his ministry in this third uh, missionary journey that he recognizes he doesn't have much time left. So what does he do? He calls the elders. And, and, and it's important. And there's a reason that he called the elders because he recognized how important Christian leadership is in this continuing the spreading of Jesus Christ. We are reminded in Hebrews 13 and 7, remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you and considered the result of their comment conduct, imitate their faith. The apostle Paul was recognizing and acknowledging that the elders, the leadership of the church should uh, lead in such a way that it would garner people to want to follow their example in faith, in faith. So he calls to them to give them some instructions. He, he recognizes that his time is short, so he calls them to come. And the fact that they all arrived, the, 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 they did come acknowledge the fact that the influence that he had and how did he get this much influence? How is it that this apostle could call on the elders and they would come? It was because of his lifestyle and how he lived. He was a contagious Christian. And, and, and so what, what are some of the things that, 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 that tell us about being a uh, courageous Christian? How can we become that? First, we need to understand that Paul said he communed with the people How I was with you the whole time. See, the apostle Paul, when he arrived in the city, he made sure that he went out and got amongst the people. So much of our effort is geared toward us inviting to people to come inside the church. Thanks be unto God. Now we recognize that the church, and I hope we've always recognized it, but the church is not brick and mortar. The church is not pews. The, the church is not carpet, but the church is the body of believers who trust in Jesus Christ. So the church is wherever we go, whether I'm at home, at work, out in the streets, at the grocery store, there is the church. And so we have to, to be a contagious Christian, we've got to leave the house. We've got to get out there. And I know, I know, I know we've got to be restricted by this six feet rule. I understand that. But when you do have that opportunity, take advantage of it. Uh, the other thing that I noticed in this, he, he makes it very clear that he had been commissioned to serve. He had been commissioned to serve. And it's right there. He says that in that in that scripture, serving the Lord in verse 19, with all humility and with tears and with trial. He, to be a courageous Christian, you have to become a, he says, servant, doulos, slave, bond servant. Is the Lord your bonds, are you a bond servant to the Lord? Is he the one directing and controlling your life? He says, I am a servant of the Lord. And then he goes on to say, how in fact is he to serve? How is he to serve? Well, see, I, I, I'm glad that you asked that question because he says we, he has to be then commissioned. He was commissioned to serve the Lord. 
He was commissioned to serve the Lord. The Lord had called him to this ministry on the Damascus Road when he had a life-changing transformation take place as a result of coming into an experience with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. From that point forward, he was commissioned to serve. And then in verses 19 through 21, in this very power-packed, rich word of God, he gives us some things on how we are to serve. He says we are to first serve with being humble. We are being humble. We, we need to recognize that what we're supposed to do is in decrease and the Lord should be what? Increase it. In fact, Jesus Christ himself said, I didn't come what to be served, but to serve, to give my life for a ransom of many. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, perfect example, says, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. He recognized Jesus Christ, God Almighty, he in fact humbled himself, and we too should humble ourselves before our mighty God and be a humble people. And he said he served with humility. But then he also says that he served this thing about tears, tears. It just hit me when I read that, with tears. Now, as much as Paul had been through in all of these previous journeys and what he had been through in even this last and final third, as the pressure had intensified against him, it says he, the spirit, by, by tears, Paul, Paul was not crying. He was not shedding tears. He was not shedding tears because of what he was going through. He was a compassionate compassionate person. See, in order to be a contagious Christian, we have to have compassion for others. He, he looked out, the Bible tells us, Jesus looked out, saw the condition of the people, and he had compassion for them. Oh, my brothers and sisters, as we go about our walk in life, we should have a, such a compassion for people that we recognize that there are some out there who are on their way to hell, who have not accepted Jesus Christ. And there should be a burden in our hearts, a, a compassion for others to want to give them and spread to them the gospel of Jesus Christ that lives would be changed. Yeah, Paul cried and he had compassion for the people. And that's what continued to drive him, his love for Christ, his, his compassion for people. And we need to have, Christians need to be compassionate people. We ought to be caring and loving people because the Bible tells us the, the badge of a Christian is how we love others. How can you love someone and have this life-changing word in you and keep it to yourself. Oh, he was a, I wish I had some more time to spend on that, but I got to move on. Not only was he uh, a compassion, but he was courageous. He was a courageous Christian. The Jews had plotted against him and, and anybody in ministry, pastoral ministry and other ministries, any type of leadership, you understand that there will be people who will plot against you. You understand that it's not going to be easy. I tell you, being a Christian and being a Christian leader is not for cowards. Oh, no, because you're going to have opposition. You're going to face some trials. And, and, and sometimes those trials will even come from the people you are ministering to. But, but, but he is courageous. And why, why do I say that he was courageous? Because in spite of the persecution, in spite of all of the trouble, he goes on to, to tell the people, it's right there in that passage of scripture, he says that he came declaring anything that was what? Profitable. In, no, in spite of the Jews persecuting him, he recognized that he had to continue to spread the gospel that was profitable. It kind of reminds me of that passage of scripture that was uh, given in 2 Timothy to study to show thyself to prove unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed. Why? Rightly dividing the word of truth. If you can rightly divide the word of truth, that means there's a wrong way to, and, and, and the Bible has been misused to to go to people's points of views. And I wish I had some more time to deal with that. But it says that we ought to spend some time in studying so that when we go out there, it's profitable, that it is, it is, it is encouraging, that it is nurturing, it is growing, and more importantly, that it is doctrinally sound. So he was a courageous Christian. And then, and then the other thing is, in order to be a contagious Christian, you must be controlled by the spirit. It's right there in verses 22 and 23. We read it together. And now behold, bound by the spirit, bound by the spirit, 
I am on my way to Jerusalem. That, that, that word bound mean he was, he was bound, he was surrounded, he was encouraged, he was moved to do these things by the Spirit of God. God was leading him, controlling him by the Spirit to do these things. So a contagious Christian has to be a spirit that is controlled Christian. In fact, the Bible tells us not to be controlled but with new wine, intoxicating beverages, but be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Yes, we want God to control our lives. And in order to be a contagious Christian, you have to, in fact, be controlled by the Spirit of God. And then he says, bound by the Spirit, I'm on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen there. See, the, the work of God, we don't always get to see the whole picture. And we don't need to see the whole picture. What we need to see and what we need to do is do thus saith the Lord and leave the rest of it to God. If we're doing what he said, he will make a way. Oh, I know I've got some people out there who will tell you who can testify to the fact that what? God will make a way. Have you had some times in your life when you couldn't see a way out of a time of trouble, but God came in the right time and then showed you a way out of no way. Oh yeah, he's a good God. And the apostle Paul had been through many trials and tribulations, but each one of those trials and tribulations, oh, he brought them through. And so he didn't need to see the whole picture. Oh, so many of us have to have all the facts, all just have to have all this information. What you need is faith in God. Well, my brothers and sisters, then he says, he goes on to saying that he was Holy Spirit gave him the, the testimony, solemnly testimo to testify in every city. The Holy Spirit guided him, gave him the words to say. Oh yeah, my brothers and sisters, we need to constantly be praying for the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives to lead us and guide us. And oh, a lot of people, boy, they don't like to talk about, oh, the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, because of all of the misrepresentations about him and what he does in our lives. But I tell you, I want him, to, I continue to pray every day that he would control my life, not myself. Lord, your spirit lead me and guide me and take control of me, that everything I do would be pleasing in your sight. So a contagious Christian has to be controlled by the spirit. Well, and as we get to, as we get to this last verse of this text and, and uh, that verse 24, and I just want to read it again so that you just see the impact that this had. But I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself so that I may finish my course and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. When we talk about humility, oh, he sums it up in verse 24. He says, I don't count my life for anything. In other words, what Paul was saying is he laid his life on the altar of sacrifice for God's use. Have you laid your life on the altar for sacrifice to God's work? He got to that point. And, 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 and he recognized and admitted, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, it's going to be trials and tribulations because that's what the work brings. But I rightfully and knowingly go into that. Why? Because the apostle Paul knew that we are only here for a short time. And it's what we do for Christ that will last. It's what we do in the work and the spreading of the gospel. It is what we do is being a a, a courageous, committed, controlled Christian who is contagious about spreading the gospel that one day soon and very soon will receive a reward for the service. And he knew that. That's why he said my life, he's talking about this life on this side. He lays it down. Why? Because it's just temporary, but it's eternity that he was looking for. In fact, he summed up those words and summed up that thought when he was encouraging young Timothy. He said, uh, he, he says that in 2 uh, Timothy, he says, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering. He was describing his life as a drink offering. When the offering, the drink offering, the wine was placed on the hot coals, a vapor would come up and just disappear. That's how our time is on this side. Whether you get 50, 60, 20, 30, 40, 80, 90, 100 years here, it's just like a vapor. It's going away. And he says, but. He says, but 
I have, I have fought a good fight. Finish my course. He recognized I've done the work that God sets before me. And because of that, oh, I'm going to receive a crown of righteousness. And then Paul goes on to encourage us by saying, not to me alone, but to all of them that love the appearing. Oh, my brothers and sisters, do you have the confidence in knowing that there's going to be a reward waiting on you on the other side to spend eternity with God? Paul knew that and it made him a contagious Christian. Oh, I'm praying that if there's going to be a change, oh, if our world is going to get better, that Christians have to become a contagious Christian with a zeal and fire and passion and spirit of love to go out and share the gospel. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you hear my words, I pray that your heart and your mind had been opened. For Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his blood. And he just and it didn't stop there. The Bible tells us three days later that he got up with all power in his hands. He had defeated death. He defeated death. And if we trust in him, we too will defeat death. But you have to trust him, ask him to be your savior and Lord of your life, and you'll be saved. For those of us who are saved and committed, I pray that the body of Christ would not be restricted and 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 so downtrodden about the fact that we can't be together. Oh, the most important things, my brothers and sisters, take advantage of this time to go out and tell somebody about the goodness of God in, Christ, in Jesus Christ. And we'll have an opportunity, the Lord should say the same, to come back and unite in fellowship. But what's most important is not the building, but the people that are impacted by the body of Christ. Be a contagious Christian. Our Lord, Father God, we come before you and just thanking you and praising you for all that you've done for us and all that you do for us and all that you will do. Oh Lord, I'm praying that somebody who hears this word would be convicted that their life would be transformed and changed and that the influence would be made, changes would be made as a result of you and we would make sure you're the one to receive all the praise and all the glory. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you and keep you is my prayer.